and it's like like I said again, it's it's not really focusing on the money, but rather adding value to your whatever it be it may be your clients or your fan base or just your audience, and then from that, adding so much value, a byproduct of of them getting results is them reciprocating what you've gave, given to them, and they're going to give you money. So don't think of money as the as the as the end goal. Think of it as a byproduct of the end goal, which mm. is adding value to people. Hmm. Fabulous. And in terms of the coaching, how how has it been for you in terms of uh, the coaching side of the business? And how can people reach you out in terms of your services? Oh no, I I, I, I don't coach yet. Okay. I don't coach yet because I'm not confident in my ability to coach yet because I'm still being coached myself. I'm a student myself. I help coaches coach other people uh, or get in more clients because I want to increase the amount of people that they can impact because as a coach, that's what they want. That's why they're a coach because they want to teach people to do what they do because they're an expert. They're, they, they're just a guru or I, when I say guru, it's, it's kind of become a, a term that's being overlooked and yeah, it's, he's a guru. Everyone's a guru these days, but just someone that's really passionate about what he does. And when it comes to coaching, something that you, that's the third step of uh, the third tip that I'll give one of my uh, a fellow entrepreneur is that after uh, knowing that it's psycho uh, psychological, changing their beliefs, it's to find proper ways to educate yourself mm -hmm. and to use coaching and mentors and masterminds as a tool for that because in a mastermind or or um, or a course you're going to get the collective wisdom of not only you and the coach or the teacher or the mentor but also the surrounding people that are with you mm -hmm. so from that collective wisdom you're going to be able to do things much at a much faster pace and you're going to be able to see some foreseeable things that might obstacles that might come up and how your mentors have dealt with that in the past. Instead of you trying to spend so much time or wasting so much time dealing with the mistakes that they've already done and they've already, they've already noticed in the past. So it's basically getting the information uh, through practicality, through someone that's actually practiced what they preach, not through theory, which is what most universities do. Nice. This but, yeah. but with that being said, if you're watching this, if your audience is watching this and they're not entrepreneurial, they it's it's the same. You, you should still educate yourself through the most efficient way. So instead of thinking, let's say I'm not an entrepreneur at all. I just want to be a lawyer. I just want to be a doctor or anything. That's, that's still a very important role in our society. We still need people like that. But instead of thinking, hey, I need to go to the most prestigious schools. I need to go to UCT. I need to go to BITS. Uh, if it's not really required for you to get the skill sets, why not just go to any uh, what's it, any other normal school that doesn't cost as much, where you might actually be learning more, such as UNISA or any other technical college? Because I can tell you from my experience personally that UNISA, you have the um, how should I say this? You you have the potential to learn much more than you do in a traditional high class, high end, top, top end university. So yeah, that's also what I mean. It's, it's finding proper education. If you're an entrepreneur, do it through courses. If you want to specialize and be a, a practitioner of some something, go through the, the most efficient way possible of educating yourself. So, you know, like you, 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 you're touching a couple of very important aspects, you know, like when you're talking about not following the traditional norm of education, finding a uh, reliable, kind of like flexible uh, institutions or flexible ways of learning that you can still support yourself uh, without getting the debt loan, without getting, the, how can I put it, without getting the education loan, you know, uh, where, you know, the whole family can be crippled because now there's this hundred thousand or sixty thousand a year or eighty thousand a year that they have to pay, whereas you can find way cheaper ways of education, 
what's your take about people that are because what i find it very interesting it's it's uh eco there's always eco aligned to it as a whether as a student of the game or as a student or you know, maybe you want to 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 say you know i'm doing my mba at uh this university whereas you don't want to do it on at unisa or you don't want to do it at you know uh, there's different platforms online that literally that are way damn good for free actually you know uh what's your take about you know you like re how important is it for people to recondition themselves you know realizing your current situation not trying to compete with the joneses because when you're trying to compete with the joneses uh children that have money to take whether that child to prestigious school whereas you don't have that you know now all of a sudden your parents are forced to try and leave that lifestyle to make you be better and then on top of that you don't do quite well you have this amazing degree that's just gathering because wow. right now who's employing no one and let's be honest no one is employing uh it's tough in the market unless if you're very creative of how you're gonna get into the job market you know um mm. what's your take in terms of people reconditioning themselves special entrepreneurs well it's very important obviously to recondition yourself because uh the traditional way might is not the best way because from mentors that i've had in the past that tried to explain to me why going to part-time university or unisa is better than uh going to whatever prestigious college that you want to go to uct it depends on what you what you want in life do you just want to be let's say if i were to go into accounting do you just want to be an accountant and help people with their books for the rest of your life and do nothing but just do that or do you want to be the best at what you're in to actually gather the maximum amount of knowledge that you possibly can and then not only help uh what's its normal clients but helping the world's most top end uh, I, i don't know like helping the top 500 full stuff 500 list of companies with their accounting stuff like that it depends what you want to be in life if you truly want to be the best then you need to come up with creative ways to get the most need to get the most of what you of what you currently have and your circumstances so again another point that you just brought up being creative it's also very important in life and also in entrepreneurship not depending on your resources but rather your resourcefulness in things yeah uh i can tell you from a tip if you are currently if any of your audiences they they they're currently debating whether or not to go to university or to start their own business or oh no let's say they're debating to go to university and they're debating which one and for instance let's say they're an accountant they want to be an accountant should they go to UCT or WITS or should they go to UNISA let's say they're in the current situation where if they were to choose you UCT they need to go through some sort of loan or some way of getting more money because they're not in they're not that um uh, how should i say this uh privileged should i say yes they're not that privileged um first something that i just gave from my mentor is that hey if you go through the degree such as i would yeah no first of all he actually told me the the main difference between traditional university prestigious university and part time unisa the main difference is let's just say this whole this whole degree your whole accounting degree was a 100 page document right mm-hmm. for just for example obviously it's much more what unisa does no should let's let's start with the traditional prestigious uh, university what the prestigious university does is that the teacher the lecturer they teach you and they focus on the 20 to 30 pages that they know is going to be in the uh, the exam they tell you what to focus on study these t- 20 to 30 because obviously the exam's not going to test the whole 100 page document study these 20 to 30 pages that's what the exam's going to be focused on and that way you will pass they're focusing on how to get you to pass whereas unisa they don't give a damn they give you the whole 100 page document go study 
good luck with your exam. Every, we're not going to tell you the 20 to 20, uh, 30 pages that you need to focus on. We're not going to give you a scope. You need to know everything in order to pass. So from there, when it comes to actually wanting to find a job, if you're that type of person and you're not an entrepreneur, when you're trying to get hired, this mentor of mine that told me about this, he's actually in the, the human resources department of many prestigious companies out there. And he said that as head of HR, he would much rather prefer someone that went through UNISA rather than a prestigious university. Because an individual that goes through UNISA has much more self-discipline because there was no teachers, there's no in, uh, what's an ecosystem for them to thrive in or to be focused in, yet they still achieved their bachelor's degree. And if they passed, they actually know more knowledge than the prestigious, uh, what's it, than the students of the prestigious university because they're, they weren't given more, uh, they weren't given guidance on what to study and a scope of what the test or exam will be. But with that being said, he's only the HR. Yes, he, he helps the company decide what, uh, who should be employed, but in the end, it comes to the decision of the CEO, the decision makers. And unfortunately, they want people in prestigious universities because yeah. again, it's an ego. Yeah. So what my mentor said as a workaround, because if you truly be, if you want to be an accountant, you need to go through after your bachelor's degree, you go through a whole full year of getting your honors degree, right? Yes. Yeah. So say rather than going to, let's say UCT for your bachelor's degree, and then still going to UCT again for your honors, you could actually take your bachelor's from UNISA and just go one year honors at UCT. So if we were to put this on a graph, let's say this is high school, you just went to UCT, you got your uh, bachelor's degree in accounting, you went from here, high school, to here. And then th this is just like the our perception of what, what the value is. And then from here, me, someone that went to UNISA, I got my bachelor's degree in accounting, I go from high school to here. Because obviously a UNISA degree is not equivalent to, uh, what's it, a UCT degree. Sure. But, this person, if he wants to be a chartered accountant, will continue. He needs to go through honors. So he needs to take an additional year. He goes from here to here. Whereas I'm here, I can take my degree and my results from UNISA and go straight into UNISA if I'm really determined to be the best at what I am at. Mm. So I go from here straight to here when we see eye to eye. Mm. And now, not only do I fulfill needs and wants of HR, the person that initially looks at your application because you can see that you graduated from UNISA. I also fulfill the needs of the employer or the, uh, the CEO because I'm also a graduate from UCT. So it, you need to be creative with this. You need to know which is the best way. Let's talk about as an entrepreneur being exposed in different worlds, you know, uh, traveling to China, Africa, you know, does it keep you, does it give you a bit of an edge? Because I, I usually, whenever I'm interacting with my, my other entrepreneurs, you know, they will tell me, yo man, I was in this country, this is what they're doing. How about you implement that? Or if I travel somewhere, I'll find out that maybe they are on the side of the technology or they're doing something that I can implement in my business. So sometimes I believe that gives you a bit of edge, you know? Um, Especially when you go, I'm a, like, for, for example, with me, I like seeing things physically. You know, if I see how other businesses work on the ground, I'm able to implement that sometimes to my own business. You know, what's your take about traveling as an entrepreneur uh, in different countries, whether it's China, whether it's UK, where, you know, whether it's Rwanda, you know, does it give you an edge as an entrepreneur in terms of being exposed and what you can implement in your business, seeing what other companies are doing. Yes, definitely. But not only in the aspect of business, but also personal, because you just explained how you can actually take the strategies that 
other businesses in other countries are implementing and put it into your own business. Yes, that is also very important. Uh, but like I said, from my first tip, everything is psychological. So you need to develop yourself as a person. And through traveling, I realized that, hey, I'm learning not only about other businesses, but also the culture of, of, those, of those countries that I'm going into, the people there. So that will basically expand my knowledge in terms of uh, culture. And because one of the fundamental character traits of a entrepreneur is someone that likes to learn. Mm. They challenge themselves to learn new things every single day because it just it keeps them on the edge and it keeps them keep wondering of what, how to do something more efficiently, more effectively. So just continuing to grow your mind through actually learning new experiences, experiencing new things, new foods or new this and new that, is gonna help grow you as a person and in return from you growing as a person is gonna grow your business. You're gonna have so much more energy, vibrance and life when it actually comes time to go and focus on your business. So yeah, traveling is very important. When it comes to China and its thriving economy, it's more, it's realizing that they've also made some sacrifices. In order to have this epic or crazy manufacturing process or this or that or that, they've given up, but it's the people rather, not the country, have given up their human rights, most of them. Mm because they're under a dictatorship. So it really in life, it's it's about, this is not gonna be answering your question, but no, that's fine. Um, knowing, hey, yes, certain subject A or B is better, but what are the sacrificing? But also getting like the good traits of every single subject that you're looking at and just just nitpicking and then forgetting what, uh, what it's, what the bad things are, what their, uh, let's say, I want their good things without their bad things. That's that's what I like. That's what I do when it comes to me eventually. That's what I'm going to do when it comes to me coaching someone or people. It's to take the philosophies of the world's greatest and just blend it into my own vision. Just nitpick the things that I like. That's what that that's what you should do. Uh, but yeah, when it comes to China, personally. I'm, I'm on both fences. Hey, they have perfect economy, but also, mm, yeah, the human rights not that good. We won't be able to do the Zoom call if it was through. No, no, Zoom is allowed. You wouldn't be able to go through on YouTube. There's no YouTube in China. There's no Google in China. There's no this in China. There's no one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, there's no me too movement, there's no parades, there's no marches, nothing. You can't even organize it because once you do, everything is tracked. Your social media, your WhatsApp or their form of WhatsApp is WeChat. And on WeChat, you have to link your ID, your physical, your, your ID to your, your, social, your social profile. So they know exactly who you are. So there's no creating, let's say, if you, I'm William Wu, another profile named Michael, where I can pretend to be someone else. Nothing like that. Crazy. You can have every single thing that you do. It's crazy. Uh, mm. You know, when you, when you mentioned the word trait, which, you know, it's very close to entrepreneurial or it's very close to uh, self well-being or self aware as an individual, you come across as someone that reads a lot. Which books are you currently reading? <laughs> which books are you currently reading and which one is your favorite? If... Oh. I will tell you something right now. Yeah. I don't like reading. So when I read a book, there's a purpose behind it. Sure. And I don't read a lot. Cool. But contrary to your belief, because when it comes to reading, I don't do it for entertainment purposes. I do it strictly to learn something new. And what I don't like personally about some people when they do reading is that they just read like a book a week or a book a month or and they and they don't actually implement what they read. So if you really would like to know me as a person, I only read two books every single year. But the thing is, I keep rereading those two books and I can 
I implement it. I know how to cite it through, if you ask me any question on the book, I'll be able to do anything that you ask me. I keep implementing and rereading the same book until I've mastered it because I believe that repetition is the mother of all skills. But let me just show you the book that I'm reading currently. Um, so, these are the two books that I'm currently reading. And this is the book that I've mastered last year, How to Win Friends and Influence People. A lot of people know how to have read this book. Mm. If they are any in any type of corporate managerial position. But for this year, it's gonna be these two books. The Shadows, and this is an international book, and this is a South African book by Alex Dubé. So sure. pay no tax, get more money. Nice. Have you started reading yeah. the books? Uh, I've started reading The Shadows nice. and I'm still to go on to this one. But for now, I've mastered this and also Rich Dad Poor Dad, a very, very, very important book when it comes to starting your entrepreneurial journey. That's what I'm also, I finished it. Uh, yeah. Cool. Although, personally, it, it's it's been a catalyst yeah. to me wanting to start my entrepreneurial journey, but it hasn't been the answer to everything. Yeah, you're yeah. Gonna, if, if you continue down, especially in property, you're going to realize that, hey, what the hell do I need to start a corporation for? I can just build a trust and through that have all the asset protection and all the tax benefits through, you're going to learn new things once you go into any sort of uh, once it's business model through property it's it's trusts and also the con uh, the principle of conduity if you know what that is that basically you don't have to pay tax <laughs> nice nice so what's very interesting what, what what are some of the just to wrap it up where can people get hold of you um but i wanted to ask you about mentorship man where where can some people access these mentorship programs you know where can they find uh, mentors the right mentors or the right people to kind of like coach them you know do you have certain individuals that you are managing where maybe you can able to say go to this website you can find these people you know this is time for you to yourself as well no yeah definitely um when it comes to different aspects because like I said, eventually I want to be someone that coaches everyone, not just entrepreneurs. So once they come into my program, I want, I have partners that I've already gone through their program that I really would like my students to go through themselves, whether they choose this or that or that. So it depends really on what you want to do. If you want to focus on your personal, develop your personal growth, uh, then I'll set you to this person. One. One of my greatest mentors is Tony Robbins. I'm not sure if you are familiar with him. Uh, if you want to start your digital marketing agency, I'll send you to this mentor. His name is Iman Gaji. It's amazing. If you want to go to property, there's another mentor that I have. He's South African, uh, Italian South African, sorry. His name is Carlo Mariani. He's the best at what he does. He really does try to uh, go through teach and impact the people that he that, that that go to him he gives things for free he gives so much value for free and that's the thing when it comes to self-education there are a lot of people that that are fake in this world and unfortunately it's very hard these days to know whether or not they're actually who they say they are yeah so you really do need to do your research because i can tell you that from my personal experience when it go when it went to property um, I went through one course before going to the current coach that I have now that is Carlo. Um, they were a complete scam, a ripoff. Well, not 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 a, a scam, but a ripoff. Yeah. But with that being said, I don't regret it because it sort of acted as a catalyst for me to actually look at my situation and say, "Look, you fucked up here. You need to actually go find a proper coach." that actually wants to help people. And how I do that is by vetting my coaches, by, by vetting these mentors of mine to see 
what their current beliefs or what their current lifestyle is, what their real lifestyle is, mm. how they're currently living. If they want to, if you want how they're currently living, if everything that they're doing currently is how you want to live life or an aspect of it is how you want to live life, then you can go ahead and copy them and go with their program and do this or do that. And when it comes to just getting to know whether or not there's someone that really wants to help you, I can tell you now that when I found my property coach, Carlo, initially, just as a test, I just wanted to see what he was like as a person. I just wanted to know whether or not he would help me, whether or not I had the money or not. I had the money, but I sent an email to him in the beginning because before starting my journey of entrepreneurship, I used to specialize in photography. So I was very good when it comes to taking pictures and stuff like that. I wrote an email telling him about my current circumstances that I just went through another property course that I thought was total BS that tried to upsell me to a 60,000 brand course or this or that, whereas that knowledge really wasn't worth that much money. And telling him that, hey, I am a photographer myself. Would you mind like me exchanging my services for your coaching, for your mentorship? And he replied, yes, definitely. I don't mind bartering services. Nice. And from there, I realized that, hey, this guy is really a real coach. He wants to help people. And from there, I didn't offer him my services. I just paid it upfront straight because I knew what type of person he was. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so when it comes to finding coaches, I could tell you more about if you want to actually, if it's property, if you're looking for a property coach, definitely Carlo, but let's say, if some of your audiences they're not in South Africa uh, how would they find whether or not these people are actually showing because with property they will say if they're an expert they say oh hi my name is blah 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 I do this I do this and as social proof they say I have so many deals yeah. I have so many properties on my own company and do this you can actually do due diligence and research whether or not they have that much uh, that much properties under their name if they're actually making the amount of money they're making mm -hmm. and if it comes to anyone in South Africa or any coach in South Africa that has a business in South Africa that's they are telling the public hey I'm making this amount of money 10 million this million that million you can go on to CIPC and check whether or not it's true down in their privacy policy you go click you find out what their legal business name is Mm. And then you just type it in the CIPC. Go into CIPC, type it in, see if, first of all, if their name actually corresponds to the, the online name that they give. And also, second of all, to see the AR, uh, the annual returns. And there's a certain amount of money that you have to pay back to CIPC, depending on the amount of, yeah, depending on the amount of money that you've made, your revenue per, uh, annually. So if they're saying they made 10 million, that means they have to pay, I think it's 3,000 in annual returns every single year. So if you can see AR 3,000, good to go. Good to go. What they're doing, I think the proof. If it's property, uh, you can go on, you can search onto some, a property tool that not a lot of people know about, that they really want to restrict, especially state agents, because they don't want you to have this tool, because it's going to be so much knowledgeable insight that's going to really let you play with them and negotiate with them that they don't want this because hey the higher they can sell the property the more commission they make mm. and that tool is lifestone property and from lifestone property you can just type in the property business name and you'll see the list the whole list of properties or a list of no properties tony robertson i also do follow him a lot uh i you know from afar he's my man i, I like to read his books and I listen to a lot of his podcasts. It's really what I like about him is his ritual, his morning ritual. And uh, yes, you have a morning routine set in place. I can, it's very important to get you into a state of mind where you're in a different place. You can focus on what you want to focus on. Mm. And what he is mainly just getting clarity in what you want, what you're feeling currently, why are you feeling it, mm. and then using. The, the tool of gratitude and appreciation 
sure. and using your heart rather than your head to solve problems. Mm. That's what he does, and mainly in his morning ritual. Uh, he has something called the priming exercise where he tells people, he takes them through this process of actually taking them through three uh, things that they can really appreciate in life. Mm. Three coincidences, uh, coincidences that they can feel grateful for. And then from uh, that gratefulness, just basically living in it and then having being in a state of gratefulness and then from that state deciding what to do next with the current problem that you have in life, whether it be personal or business. Yeah, so that's what Tony teaches. And also changing your associations. Yeah. Very, your beliefs. Very important. <laughs> in terms of your, your, your digital uh, company, how can people reach you uh, for business? Uh, how can they, you know, if they want you to add value to them, how can they, you know, reach you out and yeah okay with my digital agency i don't give any of my contact details because uh the way i work is very strict i only do communication via one sort of medium which is slack and how people get in touch with me is they don't even know my email is that they literally just book through a discovery call so it's a page funnel they tell me everything about their business what they're currently making what they want to achieve and then from there, schedule a call and onboard them straight. So I don't know if I should give a little bit more insight into my company, what we actually do. Yeah, yeah, please. Uh, I said in the beginning of the call that we help businesses, more specifically coaching and e-commerce. So if you're doing anything that I like specifically with e-commerce uh, businesses, I like helping like people, health, health businesses like biohacking and stuff like that. Things that just promote self, uh, what's it? Self betterness and yeah. self growth and personal growth. I like those type of products. And my, uh, what's it? Clients that I work with, they are more offering high ticket sales. They, they have a high ticket offer, meaning it's quite, it's, it's quite pricey. But the reason for it being pricey is that they actually add that amount of value to your life. So yeah, that's what I deal with and I help them get on a minimum, six to seven, this, uh, what's it, six to seven times back their ROI. So basically six, 600 to 700% percent in return on ad spend that they spent. So if you put in a hundred rand worth of ads, you're gonna get 700 rand worth of customers. That's what I do. <laughs> That's nice. And, and, and with this Kai, with this climate change, Everyone has to look at an e-commerce business, you know. Um, that's where, yeah. you know. Uh, so you mentioned that they can get hold of you through Slack. Is it done? no? They can get me through my on uh, what's it? My discovery call funnel. Is there is there a, a, a ID on it? That's right. Yeah, yeah there is. It, uh, heban, heban h e h b a h n dot com. That's my website. And then from there, it'll take you through the whole step of onboarding or applying for a discovery call. And if you want to go to the discovery page directly, again, heban.com slash discovery dash call. And if you're wondering why my business is called Heban, it's a South African term. Heban. Heban. Something I'm very proud of. Heban. We bring impeccable results. <laughs> Unbelievable results for our clients. Yeah, and the spelling of it, it's my own, it's my own take of how I spell it. It's how I spell it when I talk to my friends, when I talk to my family, Evan. Evan. Yeah. Nice. Uh, William, thank you so much, bro, for giving us time, for giving me time, and for, you know, for jumping on this, on this conversation. I think it's high time that we create this kind of conversations to impact lives to exchange ideas, knowledge, and just to talk, you know, because everyone, if you're an entrepreneur like me, you know, I'm a student of the game. I'm always willing to learn, you know? Uh, yeah. And that's where it's at. You gotta be willing to learn. And how does learning come from? It comes from these kind of conversations, exchanging nuggets, you know? And you never know, you know? And for me, it means the world that you could jump 
to my request, you know, from LinkedIn. That's the power of, of this social media. That's the power of these social platforms if they are used for good, for good purpose. You know what I'm saying? Um, they actually do bear results, you know? Uh, I didn't know you, you didn't know me, but hey, here I am. We just had a okay. nice, close to 40 minutes conversation talking about business, which is something close to your heart, which is something that's close to my heart as well. And building relationships, you know? And that's yeah. what I love about this, this show uh, or being a content creator is that you create your own opportunities. You know, you become your own brand, utilize these social platforms, you know, and you never know, because that's how life is, you know? So it means the world, bro, yeah. that you could jump on that and uh, you could give us time to, to talk and share knowledge, you know? Yeah, it's my pleasure.